You're Thank welcome, you, bro. Boss. Thank you. Good uh, to have you. Thank you for having me. Yes. When did you realize that you were very, very funny? And uh, when you realized, did you call a family meeting to say, guys, guys, <laughs> Eureka, I found it. <laughs> I, I don't think there was a moment I realized any of that. But the, if there's anything I realized the most is the day I, I knew what to study in university to become an actor. Because that was what I asked my mom. You know, okay. I said, those who star in movies, what do they study in school? I was 15. Wow. And wow. she said, it's theaters, but it's a useless course. Ooh. You will not study it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the day I made up my mind I was going to study theater. Over time. So you've been very stubborn from 15. Well. Your mom said, don't do it. You did it. <laughs> I grew up watching TV. Okay. So I'd, I've known from the beginning. You just that knew that that's, that's my destination. This is already. me. Yes. yes. I used to watch the white ashes. Jeez. I used to watch those red <laughs> binary lines. <Yes. laughs> those the back multicolored hood. lines. All right. So you, you wrote, you produced, and starred in Extended Family. Right. If that, the, let me say that's the, the job that gave you your career break, if I'm right. right. How did you go from zero to 100 so fast in your career? Uh, it wasn't so fast. <laughs> it wasn't so fast, but I wanted to star in movies. Okay. I wanted to be on TV. Um, when I moved to Lagos, I lived with my uncle for a while, mm -hmm. and that was where I discovered motivational books. So all the books I was reading, there was a, a recurring theme in them, just do it. Just yes. breathe it. Mm -hmm. Just go out there. One of the things that you're good at doing with your comedy is you have a way of, you know, yapping people, and even they themselves will laugh at themselves. Right. Yeah. I, I, know, I know you do that very well. In the course of your career, have you yapped any powerful person that has landed you in trouble? Um, I haven't yapped anybody that has landed me in trouble, but I have yapped people that I wished I did not because <laughs> it didn't come out right. <laughs> It didn't come out right. I know how that can feel sometimes. Right, right. Okay, guys, don't go anywhere. We're just starting this interview. Uh, but you know, we're going to still drop in to know what is troubling Dan the Humorous. And uh, it's still the other news. We'll continue. <laughs> Dan the Angry, I mean, uh, Dan the Humorous prepares to unleash my conversation with Mr. Bovi Uboma continues. Um, uh, Bovi, the vice presidential debate and the presidential debates, what's your take? Uh... <laughs> Let's talk politics now. Let's talk politics now. You know, we are not afraid of anybody mm -hmm. here. You have to say your mind. Mm. Drink something. <laughs> When I saw the vice presidential debate, I was like, okay, I think I could make a very good vice presidential candidate, yeah. you know, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, for the presidential debate, I, I mean, it was an anti-climax because the two lead actors were not present. So for me, it took away the juice. But basically, it, it showed what the future should hold for our political space. Yeah. That, that's it for me. You are a, you are a man from Delta State, and mm. what is it about worry people and comedy? <laughs> How come they have produced too many comedians from worry? Mm. And even being from Delta, you should know a thing or two. <laughs> well, before I say that, allow me to. I say it at every forum I have the opportunity to speak. You are one of my mentors. Oh, you are one of the people. <laughs> Thank you. I will take it coming from a man as talented as you. I will yeah, take I mean, that as a compliment. I, I saw you on TV and I was like, this is who I want to be. Uh, you, you get? So, worry is um, a melting pot. Worry is one of the few places left in Nigeria where if you are born there and raised there, people don't, cannot tell your tribe simply because of the language, which is Pidgin English. When you see an Igbo man in Hausa land, you can tell from his accent. But when you see an Igbo man that was born in Worry and raised there, if, unless he tells you he's Igbo, you will yeah. not know, it's true. for example. True. True. So worry, I think worry was a, a, a community back in the days growing up, right? For many people, not even from our generation, the generations before us, 
the it, it's where when you come in you are accepted. So it, it kind of gives you an identity irrespective of which any ethnic group that you belong irrespective to. of your cultural Trump background. background. It just gives, it gives you, that identity you an identity, and you can just take it and run with yes, it. Yes, it was very communal. People's yeah. doors were open. People's parents will correct you. Wow. Back in the day, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, in some ways, most of the urban centers were, were like that in those days, right? Yeah, until... and it was because it's a melting pot, yeah. that's why people could make jokes out of, Oh, this is how your bad people eat, this is how evil mm -hmm. people dance. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was a melting pot, basically. What do you think the role of entertainers should be, seeing our current political situation? I think entertainers should speak up on issues they understand. That's the first and foremost yeah. Yeah. important and thing. And stay away from the one you don't know. Right. If you, if you, are, if you are not in-depth in something, Leave it. don't talk. You, or else you, you look stupid, yeah. you know? So for me, it's about speaking up about what you know, what you understand deeply. Secondly, it's about choosing when to speak about it. If your job is to entertain, entertain. If, if your job is not to create policies, don't, don't talk about the policies. You know, we have people who have been in entertainment who have been in politics as well. Ben Bruce, for example. Ben Bruce is a senator yeah. and he tweets what he thinks is wrong with the system. He criticizes the system he's part of. Yeah. But people still criticize him regardless, yeah. you know. So as an entertainer, I think you should do what you connect with, speak yeah. up on issues yeah. that really affect the society in a way you don't like, okay. but you must understand it. Those issues. In and out, yeah. I think that makes sense. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Now, having said that, if you had an opportunity to solve one major Nigerian problem, what would that problem be? Light. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to think. Yeah, nobody, nobody thinks about it. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Uh, yeah. Light. Let us, let us do something more fun before, before I let you go. Oh, yeah, this no. is some trivia game that we like to play. All right. So I just... Uh, call out the name, you, you tell me any word that comes to your head immediately that, uh, you, you know what I mean, right? Mm. All right, so we'll start. Comedy. Interesting. Nigeria. Dramatic. Corruption. Nigerian. Debates. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Election. Rigged. Umbrella. PDP. Broom. APC. Third Force. We. Oui. Maze. <laughs> Snatch. <laughs> National Assembly. <laughs> 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 Nothing to say about it. 